I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hearing today's gospel passage, we hear it in the context of Jesus on, in transition, on a move, going from his work in Galilee down towards Jerusalem. Jesus is journeying. That got me thinking this week. This week I celebrated a birthday. And it got me thinking about a memorable birthday that we celebrated in our family a few years ago. It wasn't my birthday, but it was one of our children's birthday. And the way we celebrated it was with something that we had never come across before. And that was a cake that was tie-dye. Tie-dye, like the t-shirts, like the clothes. You, you put the dye in this cake and it becomes a tie-dye cake. We saw it at the store and we thought, we've got to figure out how to make this. This is fantastic. So we went on this journey of figuring out how to put together a tie-dye birthday cake. And of course, you know, there's a lot of elements to it. There's a lot of steps that you have to take. And the steps are you make your batter and then you separate it into different cups. Each cup has its own color of dye that you put with it. Then as you pour it in the pan, it fills in concentric circles with various colors. It's very rich vibrant and it came out tasting pretty good there's something sweet in the sense of a birthday cake we can almost taste it as we're thinking about a birthday cake itself something sweet and delicious about it but as it relates to today's gospel passage there's also layers that go into today's story there is that sweet taste of the good news that is gratitude and that it is giving thanks for being made whole and healed but there's also some layers to this cake, some layers to the experience of these lepers in their lives, layers such as being outcast and shunned in society. They were ritually and physically unclean. They were not to be a part of the community and the condition that they were in. They had to let people know of their presence from far away so that no one could accidentally bump into them. But there's also another layer that's unique to the experience of the lepers. And in particular in today's story, there's ten of them. A very whole and round number that we find in Scripture. There's something of this community of lepers that links them together. Yes, we know that there's one as a Samaritan. We can presume that maybe the other nine were Jews. We're not sure. But what links them together is a shared suffering. Is this sense that their community, though be it outcast from the larger society, was a close enough knit community that Samaritans and Jews could interact together as lepers. These are just some elements and layers to the story that we're unfolding to learn more about what is the good news that presents to us in today's passage. So as we understand the lives of the lepers, we understand it as part of a journey, part of Jesus' journey down to Jerusalem, to that very place where his ministry will culminate with his death and subsequent resurrection, that process by which we, as people of faith, find our wholeness and our well-being in the redemption and reconciliation with God through Christ Jesus. But also, as we look at this narrative, this journey of being born, celebrating a birthday, let's come back to that. We all have a birthday, or else we wouldn't be in this room. We all have a birthday. We all have a story that begins somewhere. And it's linked. It's something that we all share in common. This community of lepers could band together because of their common shared place displacement in society. But we as humans, as the human family, the people of God, the big picture people of God, share in common our birth, share in common that we came into this world as vulnerable and reliant fully upon the goodness of others to bring us to the place where we are today. The layers begin to peel out. And that brings us to the one particular leper. Let's focus on him for just a moment. This is where we begin to taste the icing, the sweetness of that layered cake that we were talking about in the gospel today. That icing is what he does that is different than all of the other lepers. Yes, we know he comes back and says thank you. 
But look back in the passage. A little spark happens immediately before he does this. He notices. His eyes are open and he sees that he was made whole, that he was made well. He sees that he was healed. We don't hear that narrative of the other nine lepers, but we hear it of this one. There's something to this idea of recognizing our giftedness, of recognizing what Christ has done in our lives, but also what it means to be made whole in this sense of reconciliation. There is a recognizing, there is an identifying nature to the story today. Having our eyes open to see what it is that we are grateful for. When we celebrate a birthday, we are given gifts. But it's also an opportunity to name and celebrate the gifts that are blessings in our lives. Not the physical, tangible things, but the people in our lives. The good news of Scripture, the good news of a community of faith where we can come and gather together all parts of ourselves, the broken pieces, the whole pieces, the pieces that we want to keep private and hidden, and also the pieces that we are glad to shout from the rooftops. It all comes together in this thing called the journey, the journey of life. We follow Jesus' model. And we follow the model of this one leper whose eyes are open and can see that which is worth giving thanks for. As a Christian community here in Memphis, in the Episcopal Church, and across the globe, a part of the Anglican Communion, many Christians do this, but I want you to think about it here in your own local context. We come weekly to gather and to celebrate this concept of celebrating and giving thanks. That is what the word Eucharist means. Luke in describing the actions of the leper, says he gave thanks. Luke only says this word five times in all of his gospel and the book of Acts. Three out of those five times point directly to the Eucharistic meal that we gather for in this place. There's something to this sense of looking to be made whole by coming to the Eucharist, by coming to this community, by coming to God through Christ Jesus. So as we look at this opportunity to give thanks, and we look at the opportunity that we have to count our blessings and to be grateful and filled with gratitude, we do it in the context of a community that welcomes and receives us exactly as we are. And as we do that, we give thanks. There's a moment in the Eucharistic prayer, actually it's just after the Eucharistic prayer, if you think about the way the liturgy is designed, at this very moment we're gathered in this cavernous space. The altar and table are up high. And before we move from the distances of our lives out in this space in the nave up to the holy table, the priest offers an invitation. And that invitation says, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. It is the gift of faith. It is that gift that helps us recognize and open our eyes to the goodness of life worth celebrating, the goodness of a community that comes together in all its various components to be made one body, to be made whole, to show what the world that healing can look like. It can look like Holy Communion. It can look like all of these places that claim and hold the banner of Christ high. So today, as we come to receive the Eucharist, this is not a birthday celebration, but this is a celebration that recognizes the giftedness of your birth, of Christ's birth, and of the birthing of healing and wholeness and reconciliation through God. So come to the table, come to be made whole, and find out how it is that we can give thanks and bring wholeness to the world around us. Amen.